Alrighty, we beat that puzzle, and now we are through the it's door. Too narrow to be called one. Too narrow to be called a hallway. They found themselves in a small space outside of the wheelhouse. On their left was a wooden door. This seems to be the only route. Yeah, let's go. All right, Jinpei pushed it open and stepped into the room beyond. Wow. It was full of all manner of turn of the century electronic equipment. Well, like the radio these room kind of thing. Weird. I I've never seen any of them before. Huh? Wait. This looks like this a puzzle. Is... Like it could be a fun puzzle. Hey, Morse code. Oh yes. I guess I didn't Telegram. read that. My bad. I read it in my head like this an idiot. Morse code a long time ago. One smaller machine had a metal bar that ended in a circular handle. Ace seemed to recognize it, and then we go into what Ace said. Okay. He turned and slowly took in the room. This must be the communication office. Across the room from the door they'd entered through was another door. And that door? A metal plaque was nailed to it. It read... Captain's quarters. Captain's quarters. Huh. That's what it says. Then, do you think... Mm, I don't know. I don't know if it's that uh, that obvious. Ace swallowed. Jinpei could feel his hands begin to sweat. Only Clover seemed unaffected. Well, we won't know if we don't open it. She walked up to the door and put her hand on the knob. Alright, it opened. It opened easily, and without so much as a pause, she walked in. Jinpei and Ace followed. The first thing they saw... Oh shit! Was a man on the floor covered in blood. <gasps> Wait, what? <gasps> Junpei felt his body seize up, his mouth went dry, and he felt very, very cold. Wait, so how long is this... He doesn't... He's not like a skeleton or anything. Wait, he has a wristband! Oh... What? The blood in his veins slowed to a crawl and his heart tightened like a fist. <sighs> Not again. This was the third time he'd seen the horror of death laid, up, laid out before him. He didn't think it was something he could stand to see much more of. So was this a previous game that for some reason he didn't pick up the body? Like his zero just been doing this non-stop? Still, he had begun to accept that whatever it was that he saw, whatever happened to him was beyond his control, and whatever force controlled him was driven by a determination that he could not hope to match. Damn. A sense of helplessness, of de desperation, washed over him. It left behind a feeling of utter emptiness that wormed its way through his body like acid. No, w wait. We didn't check his pulse yet. Maybe he's still alive. Fueled by that spark of hope, Junpei ran to the man's body. And his heart fell. Fell. Yeah. That, that guy dead. When he touched his hand... No to pulse. His neck. Yeah, no pulse. His pupil ha pupils had dilated. Man, I can't read tonight. And he wasn't breathing. Well, he's dead. Damn. If only we knew how it happened. A bracelet. Junpei lifted the man's already stiff body. There was a deep red wound on his chest. These wounds... Uh, I wonder what killed him. Aw oh, man, this guy got the stabbing ending too. <laughs> Sucks for him, I'm on a different one now. It must have been this. Oh damn, not quite a stab, more like a... hack. For lying next to the corpse was an axe. The entire blade of it was drenched in bright red blood. From the shape of the man's wound, there could be no doubt that it had been made by the axe. Junpei looked at the body again. A lake of blood stretched out around it. It was wearing clothes of a ship's captain, although they were stained with blood. These clothes? A captain? Does that mean this guy was Zero? Uh... I don't know about that. His left hand was a bracelet. The number on the bracelet was... Zero. Bracelet zero. Uh It was only then that Junpei noticed the stench of blood that filled the room. 
He couldn't help but laugh. Was there like a mysterious zeroth person? Like, we thought there was only one through nine, but there was someone numbered zero. I thought the... when you died, this was supposed to turn off and, like, come off. Wasn't the other one off as well? Interesting. There's nothing else for him to say. It was too simple, too obvious, too straightforward. If there hadn't been a dead man on the floor, Jinpei might have thought it was a joke. I mean, it's definitely not... I definitely don't think it's the zero that he thinks it is. It may be wise to find a way out of here first. Yeah, you're right. Alright. Oh! Find a way out! Okay! Ace has said the words. We do have another puzzle. I was wondering if we are going to have another puzzle before the next ending. We might even have more than that. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything after the ninth door or after this. Alright, so we have a video camera. A camcorder. It looks like it's pointed at the door. Well, the power's on. Why would someone want to videotape a door? Alright. Um... No dice. It doesn't matter what I push on here. It's not working. I don't think the power's on. Okay, that's a tip. A plaque on the door, but it doesn't say anything. And then obviously the door's gonna be locked. This is the exit, huh? I don't even really have to try this door to know that it's locked. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got some blood. There's blood on the chair. You think this was the dead guys? Yeah, probably. Damn. Did he, like... I don't know if he, like, got stabbed here and, like, crawled to the other room. Oh, we got a music box. Okay. It's a lamp, but it doesn't turn on. I don't think there's anything special about it. Small table. Man, whenever Clover's talking, she always looks so sad. Well, there she doesn't look too bad, but... A bed. There's nothing on it. Like, some of those other shots of her, they're just, like, so depressing. Okay. Oh, monitors. The screen shows a big hospital room. Oh, interesting. A bunch of weird buttons on here. They probably switch what you see on the screens. Do you know how to work this thing? Um, why don't we just press one of these? Like, this one. Oh, zero. Well, I guess it does change the... Wait, what the hell is this? Wait, what does that say? There's nothing... What? There is certainly words on that monitor! <laughs> that is not just static. That's, that's telling us everything about this game right now. I just can't read it. If you... If you something... <laughs> just kidding, I'm not gonna be able to read that. Uh, and then it's already on the screen behind us. You're right. Whatever that camera sees is sent to the screen in real time. Whatever that means. Do I have to check like each of these? Huh. Whoa. Okay, that did something. Junpei snorted with grim humor for the second time since he'd come into the room. The four screens along the bottom had a single letter, each spelling out. Z E R O, huh? It's like he's making fun of us. What do you think? He turned to Clover, who was standing next to him. Clover nodded. Nothing. It seemed that she cared about little. Of course, Junpei could hardly blame her. Given the strain she was surely under, Junpei was somewhat surprised she had responded at all. Still, he had to ask. He gestured towards the corpse. What about him? Do you think that's really Zero? Clover shook her head weakly. There's no way that's him. Didn't I tell you already? Zero is one of us. Yeah, right. Well, even if he wasn't one of us, there's no way that man could be Zero. Uh-huh. Don't you get it? The letters that spell Zero on the TV screen, the captain's clothes he's got on, yeah, I mean, it's of course, the bracelet with a zero all too on obvious, it. right? It's too obvious. <laughs> look, look, this is zero right here. This dead body is zero. <laughs> Isn't that kind of fishy? You're right. Only an idiot wouldn't see through something like that. No, that, that's not the point. So I'm not trying to make fun of them for thinking a trick like this would work. I'm sure they didn't think it would work, which makes me wonder. Yeah. Hey, he didn't say why did they do it. I think this is a I was challenge. waiting for him to say it. <laughs> a challenge from the person who's really behind all of this. He's making fun of us. Uh -huh. 
Don't you get it? If whoever killed this guy really wanted us to think this corpse was Zero, they'd never have put a bracelet on him. Walking around with a Zero bracelet would be like hanging a sign around your neck that said, I did it! Anyone with a brain would be able to see that this guy is supposed to look like everything Zero is supposed to be. Just like we did. <sighs> the killer must have known we wouldn't think he was Zero and put the bracelet on him anyway. Do you know why? Why? Like I said, he's mocking us. Too bad, suckers, this isn't Zero. Where's the real me then? See if you can catch me. It's the same bad joke a lot of criminals like to play. They'll just sit back and watch people run in circles. That's really twisted, but it almost seems kind of childish. Hmm, childish. Yeah, you're right. It's really childish. It's like it's just a game to whoever this person is. That's what I seems mean, funny to me. He did call it the nonary game, Junpei. Junpei bent down next to the corpse. Wait, what? All I right, thought the corpse was in the other the room. Point. Who killed this man? I don't know. And what's this guy's deal? Who is he? How would I know that? If I knew anything, I would have told you. You have no idea who he is. Why would I? Maybe we are still in the same room. I don't know why I thought this was a different room. Hmm. Jinpei sat back on his haunches and thought. We should check and see if he's got <coughs> anything on him that might tell us who he is. Give me a hand here, Clover. Huh? We gotta flip him over. How else are we gonna search his pockets? <laughs> Clover didn't move. Okay, uh, fine. Guess I'll do it. Where's Ace? Jinpei had no choice but to move the body on his own. Here we go. Because <clears throat> there wasn't a whole other person there at all or anything named Ace. He grabbed hold of an area not completely covered in blood and shoved. It took a moment, but eventually Jinpei felt the man's bulk begin to shift. But just as it did, huh? something fell. From the man's left wrists. Okay. Hey, it's the... Right. The brace with the zero on the face. Okay. We know this. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm not gonna listen to that. Sorry. <laughs> Jinpei stared at the bracelet. This man... He's dead, isn't he? What? Jinpei! What? Huh? No, it's just... I... I guess I didn't really think about it until right now. If his bracelet's <laughs> off, that means he's dead. Well, yeah. it's pretty obvious that he's dead. You checked his pulse. You don't really what need the? to look what? at his bracelet to figure out that he's dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess you're right. It is pretty obvious. Well, uh, he looks a lot better than the other bodies we've seen, though. I love how, like, you know? Jinpei's logic is all over the place. Like, in one moment, he'll be like, this whole thing's staged! It's obviously set up to make it look like Zero, he's mocking us, he's playing games with us, anybody would be able to see through that, and then he's like, two seconds later, he's like, oh, This guy that I checked that is dead earlier is dead! <gasps> I mean, if, if there wasn't all this blood, he'd almost look like he was still alive. I mean, I know what? it's kind of a messed up thing to say, but he kind of has it better, you know? Dying from a bomb going off inside of you? I mean, that's just... Some of Snake's bones went right through his skin. Shut up, Junpei! I, I think the explosion must have thrown him against a wall Junpei, shut up! There was a broken bone just sticking out of his left arm. Junpei! And... Uh, oh. oh my god. Suddenly, Junpei realized what he was saying. How could he have been so cruel? He clapped his hands over his mouth. But it was already too late. Yeah, what the hell, Junpei? I mean, I know you're, like, freaking out because of everything that's going on, but come on, man. He turned, to he turned to look at Clover. She was glaring at him furiously. What did you just say? Her words sounded cold. He knew an apology could hardly atone for what he'd done, but he tried anyway. Oh, man. Uh, I am... I, I am so sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that. I, I really don't know what I was thinking. I mean... No, that's not what I'm talking about. What did you say about his arm? What? A uh, arm? Yes, his left arm. You said it, didn't you? Well, yeah, I did, but I mean, I didn't Wait, did, did you see it too? Of course not. I could barely look at him. Is there some kind of clue There's here? There's no way I was going to see the details. Ooh, is there some kind of clue? Clover took a quick deep breath. I have Are chills you sure right now. Are sure it was his left arm? Wait. Junpei thought back. 
yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was. And he had a broken bone, right? What the hell are you getting at here? Just shut up and answer me! What? She shoved her face closer to his. He could see the fire in her eyes. Junpei winced and swallowed. Yeah, he did. Oh my god. Uh, it was pretty bad, too. The bone was sticking out of the arm. <laughs> no sooner were the words out of his mouth than Clover's expression changed. Clover? <sighs> What's wrong? <sighs> Look, I'm sorry if I said anything. Suddenly she was crying. Junpei wasn't sure what to do. Thank you. What? It was close to the last thing he had expected to huh? hear. What are you- Wait. Okay, so I made, like, a silly theory, uh, back during, like, when Snake died. And I think I joked about saying, like, unless they, like, replace his body and put his clothes on him or something like that with a- with a fake body and maybe Snake is still alive. Is there something about Snake's left arm? Did he, like- Well, I don't know what it could be, because he was saying, like- you a bone in his left arm? Are you sure it was his left arm? Like, why would that be something that, like, really stuck out to her? I was thinking, like, unless he... Did he have, like, a fake arm and we just never knew about it or something? Oh. Uh, Jinpei had no idea what just happened. He didn't think he'd done anything worthy of thanks, and he couldn't understand why she would have chosen that moment to begin crying. Cause I, I'm only thinking this is crying like tears of joy, and that she said thank you. So he simply stood there confused. Oh, I want to freaking know. Thank you so much, Junpei. Oh, uh, Clover. She thanked him again, and then something even stranger happened. What? Hey, uh, Clover threw. What's going on with you? I forgot to read that. Clover threw herself into Junpei's surprised arms. I just. I'm sorry, it's just. I just want to go. I'm so happy. I want to hear. Explain! Why? The body in the shower room, it, it isn't his! Oh it my god! His Wait, so why was there a fake, bo a fake body and what happened? So was the purse- Oh my god, did I joke too? Maybe I only thought it to myself, oh my god. With the first ending, did I, did I say like, what if it's Snake in that casket? And, and then I was like, no, that's stupid. Oh, maybe I only thought it. I'll have to ask my friend if I said it. Shit. Wait, huh? so is, is Snake actually alive? It's not Snake! But who would fake his death, and would Snake have no part of it, or did Snake have a hand in it? Why on earth would you think that? Because his left arm is... She stopped herself. I'm sorry. I what? I really shouldn't be talking about this. What? Uh... Jinpei decided it would be prudent not to press her for any more information. If she did not wish to tell him, she certainly had a reason for doing so. Perhaps more importantly, however, if Clover was so certain, then she was likely right. That meant that the body in the shower room wasn't Snake. It wasn't much, but that knowledge lifted some of the weight from Junpei's heart. He's still alive. I'm, I'm so happy. We need to get to that nine door and open that goddamn casket. Tears shone in her eyes. Those tears melted Junpei's heart. As she cried, she had pulled herself up against his chest like a child. Junpei put his arms around her and held tight. I'm so glad! Uh huh? Junpei, Damn. You were right! Huh? I hope this- I hope he doesn't just end up being dead in the end now. No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. But we said to her before, right? If you can remember all of those, That'll bring you good luck. Clover reached into her pocket and pulled something out. Uh, that's... It was a laminated bookmark with a four-leaf clover. Yeah, that's what we gave her. I only made it here because you gave me this. Oh. I was suspicious of everybody. I was angry and miserable. But because I had this four-leaf clover, because of what you said to me, I... Yeah. Junpei hadn't thought his words would have had such an effect on her. Her words were making him feel a little awkward. Thank you so much, Junpei. <clears throat> Is this gonna be like the Truman Show? Are we gonna get to the end and... It was... Well, no, we got friggin' stabbed. 
um, in one of the endings. I was gonna say, are we gonna get to, like, the true ending, and it's just gonna be the ninth man never actually died that was staged, um, and, and all this shit. And, like, no one was ever at risk, there's never any bombs, you know, stuff like that. Thank you so much, Junpei. She looked up at him. Oh, she said that, my bad. She looked up at him. He scratched his nose and pretended to notice something interesting somewhere else in the room. Oh, uh, if you really want to thank somebody, you, you, you should be thanking Santa. Santa? Why? Well, he was the one who gave me that thing. And the words for each leaf? I got that from him, too. Oh. Um. Uh. uh. <laughs> Awkward. Then suddenly... Silver broke away from Junpei. Uh huh? He looked confused. He hadn't thought she'd react that poorly. Silver began to pace across the room. Okay. Silver, you're weird. Six steps to the left, six steps to the right. Another six steps to the left, and then she stopped. Did... did Santa really tell you those things? Her eyes were serious, but not angry. Yeah, he, he did. Did I, uh, say something wrong? Oh no, not at all. In fact, this could be really good news, I think. You think? Santa knew about the words and the clover. The only people who should know about that are the other subjects. Subjects? Santa knew about the words and the clover. Wait, what? The other people who were in the experiment nine years ago, with my brother- Oh shit, this is what she wasn't telling us before. Uh -huh. So her brother was there too. But he's blind. And I was part of the Nevada test group. What? So neither of us would be able to recognize the faces of the people who were on this boat. Whoa, 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 okay, time out. Junpei held up his hands. He took a deep breath and let it out. Let's just calm down for a second, okay? Start from the top. Don't start with the end and then jump to the middle. You, you, you gotta start with one and then move to two and three and four and so on. If you don't tell me stuff in the right order, I'm never going to be able to figure it out. Okay. All right, here we go. Clover nodded. Right. Let's start with this experiment. Where the hell did Ace go? Anyway. What happened on this boat nine years ago? Do you know about morphogenetic fields? Morphogenetic fields? Yeah, didn't Lotus tell us about it? He did, and the realization sent chills down Junpei's spine. All right, how about this? Yeah. Theory of the telepathic mechanism. I think Lotus mentioned something like that. Junpei recount recounted what Lotus had told him earlier. Clover nodded. Hmm, telepathy, huh? Well, that's not really it, but I suppose it's similar. So they were testing telepathy on this ship? Yeah, I guess so. So, what exactly did they have you guys do? The same thing that we're doing now. Exactly, exactly the same thing. thing? What? what? The nonary. <laughs> I had the same exact reaction at like the same time as Junpei. What the heck? Nine people were put on this boat, <clears throat> and nine others were put in the building in Nevada, and the game started. What the heck? Junpei grabbed the sides of his Look, head. I'm sorry, but I, I don't get it. What do the nonary game and some telepathy experiment have to do with each other? Am I missing something here? Over bitter lip. She blinked back, sudden tears. What happened to her in Nevada? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. You know how sometimes when you're up against a really tough problem, and then the answer just kind of pops in your head? That's an epiphany. And what you learn from the epiphany can be transmitted with telepathy. What? When you add danger to that equation, then it gets easier to transmit that information over telepathy. What? So you're saying <laughs> the memory game was supposed to introduce that element of danger? Yeah, but it couldn't be just any old danger. It had to be life and death. And someone did actually die. A girl. Huh. Jinpei felt a sudden grip of despair on his heart. Something deep and distant and powerful squeezed, and for a moment he felt very, very empty and alone. You know, when Clover said someone did actually die, a girl, what if Clover was just like, poor Akane, and it turns out that like, this Akane, because they were childhood friends, 
What if this Akane only looks like his actual friend, and she died back there, and this person is just faking, you know? Oh my she god. She was on the boat with my brother. I was in Nevada. I never met her, but I did hear her name. Oh my god. Her name was... Damn it! <laughs> the sound of the door opening was like a gunshot. Jinpei spun around. Ace! Why are you always oh, ruining everything? I seem to have disturbed you. Yes, all the time. Ace, you two must have strong stomachs. I can't imagine how you could stay in this room for so long. Ace glanced down at the floor. Okay, so we are in the room with this guy. I don't know why I thought we were in a different room. At any rate, at the corpse covered in blood. Junpei, would you be so kind as to come and help me with something? I'm having a little trouble, and I could really use your assistance. <laughs> I So I just had that stupid-ass theory about, like, what if she said that name was, like, Akane. And after I thought that to myself, and then she said her name was, I actually got chills running down my spine. Because, like, obviously, if it's any name that we don't recognize, then it just means nothing, right? But that'd be insane if, if I actually just called that. Oh my god, I want to know. Damn it. Uh, All right, Ace. Come God on, damn it! It'll only take a moment. God damn it, Ace! With that, he turned and walked back toward the communications office. Okay. Clover waited until he was out of sight, then spoke in a small, quiet voice. What's the name? I don't want Ace to hear us. We can talk about this later. Damn it! Huh? Hey, wait! Clover ignored him. From outside, Junpei could hear Ace calling. Junpei, what are you doing in there? Hurry up! <sighs> <sighs> Yeah, that's what I'm feeling, man. Grumbling to himself, Jinpei stomped off towards the communications office. Oh! Okay. We're back. Hello. It looks as though that drawer is the only thing... The only thing that's locked. Oh, I don't see a keyhole, though. An electronic lock, perhaps? Take a look at the left side of the drawer. Yeah, there's some cables over there. That must mean... Interesting. Oh, so it's an early telecommunications device, most likely, most likely used to transmit a radio signal of some sort. I experimented with it earlier, but to no avail. I imagine it's broken. Huh. Hey, what's this? It's blank. There's nothing written on it. Blank paper, huh? Alright. A chair. Right, headphones on the desk. The really long cable. The tip of, it, tip of it is hooked onto one of the desk drawers. Okay. The telegraph key, a machine for transmitting Morse code. I tried sending an SOS earlier, but I doubt that did anything. Deer would never make it that easy. Do you think it's broken? No, it works. I'm just not sure if it's actually transmitting anything outside of the ship. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So that's- this whole machine is a- that, okay. Hey Ace, look! It's a monkey with glasses. How on earth did you arrive at that conclusion? We're just not gonna talk about what it is? Alright. <clears throat> Clock mounted on the wall. The hands aren't moving. Little surprise if the time is wrong. Then I suppose, or then I suppose, and there's nothing on the back. All right, <laughs> it's funny lady. Check the back of the clock. Okay. Um, an old telegraph machine. I'll be honest, I have no idea how it works. It's an old telegraph machine. Nothing suspicious here. All right, what's this thing? Small screwdrivers. Okay. Drawers. Ink! What are we doing here? What are we... What are we working on here? Okay. No reason to go back. Um... Wait, so what now? Like... What can we use some of this stuff on. We can't combine, like, the ink and paper, can we? Nope. Let's just inspect some of this just to see. A white piece of paper, it's blank. 
Okay. A bottle of ink. It's filled with ink. Alright. Hmm, a set of small screwdrivers. Perhaps we can use them to dismantle small devices. Okay, well... Alright, the screwdriver ought to make short work of this music box. Oh, we got the cylinder now. We combine the cylinder with the ink. Um, I guess I'll put the ink on the cylinder. Yes! And then we combine it with the paper! Now I'm just gonna roll the cylinder. That's what I was hoping to accomplish. And if I'm right, the ink should... Morse code chart! Alright. Cool. Now, do I need to memorize that? Is that one of these things? Go to the Morse code machine. Wait, what the heck? How did I get in like- I got in like a top-down view. There we go. Alright, I've got the Morse code I'm supposed to enter. Do I have to enter this? If I do this right, something will happen. I hope. Alright, let's give this a shot. Okay. Wait, what do I do? Do I actually- do I use the keyboard? Doesn't- Oh. Okay. Alright. That's the last one, and... Yes! Man, I wonder what that... If that says anything in Morse code. I don't know Morse code. You unlock the drawer! Cool. A red file lay in the drawer. Junpei reached down and picked it up. It looks like there's something on the cover. A L L I C E. Alice. <gasps> All ice. All ice. Alice. Does this mean? Junpei couldn't hold back. He had to know what was in the file. Whoa. Each page was covered with that weird Microsoft office font that you can change to that's just a bunch of symbols. They look like tiny drawings of birds, snakes, insects, horned animals, wings, and even kneeling humans. There were many, many pages in the file and each one was full of these strange symbols. What the hell is this? He didn't realize he'd spoke out loud until Ace looked over at him. They are hieroglyphs, a form of writing used in ancient Egypt. Nope, definitely think that's a Microsoft Office font. Ancient Egypt? That's right. Can you read them? Of course. I can't. <laughs> what would make you think I could? I was gonna say. What the hell? Junpei flipped through a few more pages. It wasn't just one or two pages that were covered in the strange symbols. Every single page was covered in them. Whoa, the, the whole thing's <clears> like that. Trying to read them was pointless. Junpei wasn't going to waste any more time with them. He made... He made to close the file. Something fell out. Huh? Ooh. What's this? He bent down and picked it up. Oh, a, a key card. Oh, damn. Bottom deck library. There's a symbol on it that reminded Junpei of the symbol for the Saturn and Mercury key cards. This one, however, had a dot in the center of the male symbol. Uranus. That's the Uranus symbol. Uranus. Junpei looked over to see Ace examining the card. In addition to the Uranus symbol, there were three words engraved on the card as well. Something's written on the bottom. Yeah. Bottom deck library. Yeah. This must be the key to the library, then. So it would seem. <gasps> Wasn't there, like, something... Shit, what was it? Past the forest... It was, like, past the... Um... The forest of knowledge. Bottom uh. deck library. Oh... Junpei remembered something he'd heard from Seven when they'd been in the chemical closet. Seven said something like... Alice, Alice sleeps, sleeps in a small, small chamber, chamber past yeah. the first of knowledge, yeah. but the navel of a gigantic. gigantic. Could <clears throat> the navel mean the bottom deck, and the forest of knowledge is the library? I predicted that the forest of knowledge is a library, like, a while ago. Then could Alice be I mean, it's kind of obvious, the library? I think, but... And I think it's also, I think Forest of Knowledge being a library is a little more obvious to me because of the Doctor Who episode remind, reminds me of that with, like, the the library being their forest in that episode, you know, of Doctor Who. So, yeah. 
<clears throat> What's wrong? Something on your mind? Junpei blinked. Only then did he notice Ace looking at him curiously. Uh, our curiosity and concern written across his face in equal parts. Um, yeah. I just remembered something. Is that so? What about? Well, don't laugh, okay? There was no reason for Junpei to hide his thoughts. He began to explain his theory to Ace. Then he stopped. It wouldn't make any sense if Ace didn't know who Alice was supposed to be. So he told Ace everything June had told him. Okay. The Egyptian Priestess and Ice Nine. Interesting. And the woman who wouldn't melt, who was recovered from the Titanic disaster? They called her All Ice, which eventually turned into Alice. And she was purchased by an English millionaire who called himself Lord Gordain. According to Seven, this ship is where he hid Alice. And you think that he hid her in a small room, beyond the library on the bottom deck? Yeah. W well, I mean, it is just a theory. Hmm. Ace stared off into the distance, his hand slowly and absent-mindedly stroking his beard. After a few moments, his hand stopped. He turned slowly to look at Junpei and his brows drew together. Junpei, have you ever heard of the term CAS? Nope. CAS. It stands for Cells Alive System. What? It is an advanced technology for freezing and preserving organic matter. Put simply, it is a technique that allows one to freeze things without the formation of ice crystals. What? Normally, if you freeze something fresh, water within its cells expands as it crystallizes, damaging the cell membrane. CAS, however, works differently. The object to be frozen is supercooled using magnetic fields, and then frozen instantly and uniformly, giving ice crystals no time to form. Ah. It was originally developed for the preservation of food, as an alternative to the normal freezing process. Now, however, there are rumors that it can be used for other things. Cryogenic freezing? What do you mean, other things? Well, there are obvious medical uses, but perhaps also space travel. Space travel? Are you serious? Hmm. Surely you've heard of suspended animation. Yeah. Cryogenic freezing? Yep. It's a fairly common idea in science fiction books and films. People are sometimes frozen for especially lengthy journeys through space. That was when Junpei understood what Ace was suggesting. Whoa, 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 wait a minute there. Ace looked at him and raised, raised, raised an eyebrow. Are you saying that Alice was frozen using that cast thing? Well, I'm sure the possibility is quite low, but it is a possibility. Hmm. But the special ice you call Ice-9 does indeed exist. It's old though, like, I don't know when Cass was invented, unless it was just, like, invented long before and utilized. I don't know. And Cass were used to freeze her into that sort of ice instantaneously. You think she could be alive? Well, I can't say for sure, of course. I'm only talking about possibilities. The melting point for Ice-9 is 96 degrees, right? If she were put somewhere where she could reach that temperature, <laughs> That's nuts. Are you really saying she could have defrosted and started walking about? No. You know where we need to take her? We need to take her to that engine room where we had to put coal in the engine. There was like a whole thing where you could walk through and it was like, too, once we turned it on, they said it was like too hot for us to walk through. What if we brought her there? Oh. You're quite right. It does sound like Let's dumb. thaw this bitch. But if she had. Then we would have an explanation for the man we found dead on the floor. You mean the guy dressed like a captain? Yes. Wait, what does he, he mean? dead when we found him. Clearly, he was murdered. Right. But if he was murdered, then by whom? It couldn't have been one of us. That would be impossible. In order to enter the captain's quarters, one must first open door one. Right. That door that requires the earth key prevented us from accessing door one. Who was it that opened that door? It would have had to have been like Zero, right? Santa and Lotus. Right. Clearly, the two of them could not have opened door one, or any other door for that matter. Who else then could have done so? The guy who's running the game? Junpei thought for a second. Nobody. A 
after Santa and Lotus used the Earth key, they turned back and met up with. I mean, unless Zero just has a bypass system, is what I'm thinking, where he can just go anywhere. Then we returned to the large hospital room and found Ace, Seven, and Clover. While we'd gone into the shower room, Ace, Seven, and Clover had stayed behind. But it's impossible for those three to open door one. Hmm. But what about when June and I took the elevator to door two? No, still won't work. We were only gone five minutes. No human being could have run to the captain's quarters, killed that guy in there, and run back that fast. It would be impossible for any of us to be the murderer. That being the case, who could have killed him? Wouldn't it make sense if his killer was someone who had been in the ship for some time? <sighs> A person like that would know the ship well. They would know the locations of all the hidden passages and secret doors. Yep. The number I talked about hidden passages and secret doors. It would be a simple thing for them to enter the captain's quarters. Back when uh, I was saying, like, they were saying, like, oh, one of us must have fixed the devices in the hospital room. I was saying, or, you know, it's Zero trying to cause division in the group while everyone was off searching. He had some kind of hidden passage into the room and fixed them or some shit, you know. Then you're saying the killer was Alice? It was Junpei's turn to raise an eyebrow. Ace drew his thumb across his lips thoughtfully. Well, this is all only one possible theory. I don't know if I'd draw, like, I mean, it also could just be zero. You guys theorize that he was on the ship, but, I mean, I don't know why, am I missing something? Alice, is she really somewhere on the ship? Junpei only, had only one clue. The key card in his hand. I mean, I guess it's possible that friggin' Alice is like actually thawed and came to life. Maybe this card will give me access to the forest of knowledge and the big mystery. What could be there beyond the forest of knowledge? Anyway, whatever. It's gonna have to wait. I can't do anything right now. All right. I'll come back to this later. He gripped the key card tighter and shoved it deep into his pocket. New material has been added to the file screen. There's a key in the drawer. I guess it was hidden under the red file. Wait, that's a key? A key with a leather case. It isn't metal. My guess would be ceramic? Jinpei, have you found a keyhole that might fit it? We haven't, have we? Um. Interesting. The only thing I can think of is back through here. Oh, so I don't think we ever fully investigated. Oh shit! What's the deal with this? Yeah, we never investigated this. Is it some kind of code? There are four rows of numbers and letters. They all start with a zero and end with an A, F, N, or V, respectively. Maybe this has something to do with number bases. The material has been added to the file screen. Oof. Okay. A drawer. There's nothing inside. What's this thing? They look like batteries. There's a cable running from the, the monitors. Alright. Go back to this thing. It looks like this... The control panel for the electronic lock. Looks like it's got a keyhole. There we go. Maybe the key I got earlier. Sweet. Just had to put the key in and now it's on. Okay, look. There's a minus sign on the screen. There's eight of them. That probably means we've got to input eight digits. You think you can figure it out? Um, I don't know, man. Can I? Let's look at this file. Um, a numerical. Numerical. Ten in base ten is a written as hexadecimal. Therefore, wait, is that for? Okay. This is what we just found. Okay, I was worried because we did hexadecimal decimal stuff before. 10 in base 10 is written as A in hexadecimal, therefore 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E, and so on. This chart shows the rules for each numerical system. Okay. So that would be 0 through 10, 11, 12, obviously. 
So what am I supposed to do with this, though? Like, it's an eight-digit code, right? Two, four, six, eight, yeah. Oh boy. I sense a challenge here. I mean, either way, there's like nine numbers here, right? And then nine, or then there's ten numbers and then some extra letters that might be in the form of number, or numbers that are in the form of letters, I should say. <clears throat> This is 0 through 9, and then a shit ton of the alphabet. <laughs> like, I don't know if I should be... Okay, um... Let's, let's just get some hints. I bet you anything, there are 8 dashes on the screen. I guess I need to put in 8 numbers. Control panel for the electronic lock is on. Eight digits, huh? Once I put in the eight digit number, I just press E to enter it, and if I mess up, I guess I just press C. Alright, let's give it a shot. <clears> huh, <throat> oh, what's the passcode? I'm pretty sure I've searched every part of this room by now. Interesting. The thing is, is like, whoops, that's not what I wanted to look at. Um... Like, even if I, even, so, even if I just take this one, for instance, 9, and then it's just add 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 to the end, I mean, that doesn't really give us anything, right? Unless you add up all the numbers, and one of these adds up to be an 8-digit number, right? I mean, that's a hell of a thing if that's what we have to do. Unless, like... Three, six, no, I was gonna say, unless we're just doing the letters. Huh. What is this? I'm actually like, I feel like there's like, maybe a few different options. Eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, I mean, so this one adds up to 105 if you add them all up in number form. But we need 8. I don't even know if this one would be... I don't think that's enough numbers to add up to 8 digits. If I was just adding... I just don't understand what we're supposed to do. And like even even just converting this little bit here. Huh. I feel like I'm like like seriously missing something. I wonder why this camera is pointing at the door. Well, the feed from us being piped to the screens behind us is gonna mean something. It does have to mean something, right? That's something we never figured out. Hmm, I wonder why this screen just shows the exit. I mean, it's just a door. I know, right? The four on the bottom just says zero. The exit and those four letters, maybe? Uh wait. What does that add up to? Shit. Um If That would be That'd be two digits each, right? Could that be the code? Could zero be the code? Do I have to find Z in hexadecimal? Um, is that what I have to do? So if... I'm trying to think of a good way to do this. There's... 26 letters in the alphabet, right? 
And if it starts at A, and A being 10, would that mean Z would be 36? Is that an easy way to find Z, at least? There are 26, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, <laughs> Q, R, S, T, U, V, V, X, Y, Z. Or is there 24? Maybe there's 24. But would that be 34? Like, I'm just trying to think of the easiest way to figure that out. Um... All right, well, I think we're gonna need a... I think we're gonna need another notepad for this one, guys. Notepad. Let's see if we can figure this out, and then that's probably gonna be it for the episode. Um, let's see here. Sorry for the music cutting out. I'm tabbed out, and it doesn't play the music. Um, this is actually gonna take a few, but I'm actually gonna type this out. I probably am overthinking this. Uh, there's probably like an easier way to figure it out, and I might be right with like what I was doing, but uh. Okay. Um, so I have that. Almost there, guys. <laughs> Sorry. I don't even know if this is the right thing to do. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. Oh, no, I was right on my first, my initial number. I was actually right. Um. Okay. We have this out now for zero. It's going to be... Um, so it's gonna be once I put an H yeah 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 yeah. Thirty-six and then E would be fifteen, R would be twenty-eight, and then uh O would be twenty-five. Really? That's not it? I did oh friggin' shit. No, I messed up. I started at A being 11 like an idiot when I wrote this down. Why did I do that? Okay, so I need a minus one number from all of these. Okay, that's that's easy enough. So it's 35. I was initially wrong about the 36. Um, so it's 35, and then E is 14, and then R is 27, and then O is going to be 24. There we go. Okay. Phew. Cool. Yes, it worked! Good job, Jinpei. Excellent, you seem to have unlocked it. Good work, Jinpei. Alright, let's go! Here we go! You found it! Yeah! Alright, and I think that is another good time to end the episode. Um, yeah, that was... That was a very interesting episode, guys. Like, no joke. That was super interesting. I'm I'm extremely intrigued by this, like, the way we developed into that, uh, finding out that Snake might be alive. That's insane. I'm really hoping so, because I really like Snake. So we'll see. And then we also had some more info about more games like this, more Nonary games going on that snake and uh that snake and uh clover were a part of and that uh santa might have been a part of as well because of like she was saying that the only reason he should know those words regarding um like the clover and stuff is if he was a part of that game uh but the thing is is Snake wasn't able to see what the people looked like, but he also had really good hearing, 
you'd think he'd be really good at recognizing people by voice. Maybe it was, like, too long ago. But wouldn't you think that he would have recognized Santa's voice, you know? But, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I, I kind of just thought about that when she was like, he's blind, he couldn't see that Santa was there. Yeah, but, you know, he's really good hearing, and I'm sure that's like a, a big thing for him. If you can't see, then you, you commit other things to memory other than that stuff, so voices are probably, like, really easily committed to his memory and stuff. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he just forgot the, the voice or something, or didn't want to say... You know, kind of like how Clover didn't want to tell the story or something. But shit, he might be alive. We had, like, some more Alice stuff talking about, like, just alternate methods of cryogenic freezing and stuff like that. But we have the bottom floor, you know, library key card or bottom deck. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I, like, I've been enjoying this game, don't get me wrong. But in the my first ending that I got... I felt like I was given parts of a bunch of different puzzles that never ended up coming together. Whereas this ending, I feel like a lot of the pieces with this Alice are coming together and a lot more information with Clover and stuff like that. So I'm like really intrigued. And then obviously whatever's going on with like Snake and everything. So, but yeah, guys, fantastic episode. I had a lot of fun with this one. Um, and I'm looking forward to the... Uh, to, to continuing this so that's gonna be it for me thank you so much for watching hopefully you join me in the the next episodes coming see you guys